This is an RNZ podcast. Kia ora, hello and welcome along to the Music 101 interview podcast. And this week for the Thursday throwback, we're going back to 2019 when I got to interview the front man of the 1975, Matt Healy. Now for those who don't know, the 1975 are an English pop band. They formed in 2002 and they've become so huge internationally. But it's been over the last, I don't know, six months to nine months that the 1975 have become even bigger due to him dating Taylor Swift. Yes, this is the man who dated Taylor Swift and she wrote the album The Tortured Poets Department. A lot about him, all motivated by their relationship. Anyway, the 1975 played in New Zealand a couple of times. They visited in 2019, then they were back for Laneway. And it was when they visited in 2019 I was offered to interview the front man. We had such a wonderful chat. But I was advised specifically ahead of this interview on what I could and couldn't ask. There was something about an ex-girlfriend I wasn't allowed to bring up, but I didn't really care about that. I had also been advised that he was clean. He wasn't drinking or taking any drugs, but to be honest, as soon as I started speaking with him, I was a little bit suspect of this. Despite that, we had a great chat, speaking about the state of the world and meeting environmental stars. Maddie Healy from the 1975. Mm-hmm. Thanks Hi. so much for taking the time for Radio New Zealand. It's all right. What's quite crazy about this journey that you're on at this very moment is you're almost just coming off the tour of your last album and almost today you're announcing a new album. We're not going to finish touring really. We're just going to go back on the road and then we kind of have a lot of January off and then we come straight back here to do laneways first of all. I know. Coming back to do laneway feels really lucky because it's a totally boutique festival. There's hardly any people there. What makes you want to do a little boutique festival when you could come and do another show at Spark Arena and sell it out? I had really good, do you remember, I had really good fun when we did Big Day Out for yes. a start. I liked touring Australia in that way. And there's kind of like a like Charlie XCX is doing it, like the friends of ours are doing it. It's in the summertime. Why not? You know? No. And um, we just played shows. We will have just played shows here. Like, I'm here mm. to do shows now. So mm. it's just, a, I don't know, we're just attracted to it. My relationship with social media is like, this is what I do. Yeah. And if you're a young person, especially, or if you're anybody else, it's, this is who I am. And even though like who I am and what I do are incredibly intertwined, there is a separation there to a certain extent. So I just fear for like young people who their kind of relationship with the outside world is a model that is kind of putting something out there and then waiting for a response because like we have evidence that that's like a recipe for disaster kind mm. of in regards to like anxiety, especially for like young women totally it's a nightmare so um it's kind of yeah self-worth and stuff like that is very very wrapped up in how, how we relate to each other online so it's do you think about how you impact your fans we yeah. have a responsibility but like i mean i like the you know the, just a conversation uh, uh, of art mm. so like that's why there's so many references in my music to like or in the visual stuff to it, the, that we do, there's so much like cultural references, mm. art references and stuff. So that's one of the things that we take responsibility for is kind of like making sure that the conversation with our fans has meaning and substance, mm. you know? And then that it's kind of didactic in a way, especially when we're talking about like, you know, the environment and stuff, we mm. need it to be purposefully informative. I think that what I admire about your music, ever since day one, Mm. is your ability to stay connected and be really relevant. And I wonder if you are so relevant because you do, you know, write the music right up until deadline day, you know? Yeah, like South Park. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do that. So you can include really, you know, things that are going in the world. Yeah, it can get, the thing is though, uh, yes, I I can, uh, maybe, I think so, probably a bit of that. Mm. The last thing I ever want to do is, remember when Katy Perry used epic fail in the song? <laughs> that was like so horrible. I love Katy Perry, like Teenage Dream and is like one of my favorite pop songs of all time. But if you try and be too zeitgeisty and kind of, it can get a bit, it can be really dated if you're like constantly just like referencing the time yes. on the nose. Yeah. So I, I kind of like the idea of being a bit more timeless. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
So I don't know how modern inherently we are, but we're always trying to expand the culture, you know? Are you still making music as you're touring? Yeah, we've yeah. had to. I mean, the song People that came out of this record was made on the the bus in the American tour, but we had a studio bus. I heard about this. Yeah. Did you get to design it or is no, it? No, 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 that's the thing. Like, I mean, like, uh, like kind of hip hop artists use, yeah. have used them quite regularly. Um, it's 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 instead of a back lounge with a TV and stuff, you just have like a setup to kind of record. So we, we did like people for the, its majority on there, and a lot of stuff kind of happened on there. So that's kind of how we've been doing it. But that's kind of how we've always been done it because I've never put down like songwriting. You know, it's not something that I like pick up or put down. I get up every day and I kind of like listen to my music and then I go and play my show. Kind of cool. Do you listen to 1975 when you wake up? Not old 1975. <laughs> oh. I don't like pop on, I like it when you sleep. <laughs> but I, um, I listen to, the, I, that, that's how I write records. Like I just have essentially kind of like vocalless demo of the whole album. Yeah. That I then write the vocals to. And then yeah. go, actually we need to change this bit or actually this verse don't work. Or, What's the drive to keep releasing things though? Because I feel like lots of artists are recording more mm. and releasing more often. Mm. Is the music world changed and people have to release more music or are you just naturally, you like being kept busy? Both. I think, I think that like on a consumption kind of cultural level, yeah, every, this is the whole thing. Like my, I always use that analogy of I watch something on Netflix and then I'll have this 10 minute period when it's finished. I'll be like, that's the best thing I've ever seen. Or I'll watch it on whatever thing and then I'll be like, next, what's the next best thing that I've ever seen? What's the next best record that I've heard this year? Every, we have this tenacious appetite for like content for a start. And especially with like music and, and TV. I think that I just want to be rep representative of now and kind of yeah. part of the zeitgeist. And I think that this, the, 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 the expression I keep using of, Kind of a real-time expression is kind of like what you see now with a lot of modern artists. And with a brief inquiry, the last album, there was a couple of tracks that were about the fear of the internet overtly, but mm. everything else was about me. It was a record about all of my fears and my desires. Mm. And at that time, it was kind of like, what is the internet doing to democracy and to us and to people and to all this mm. kind of stuff? And then very quickly, my main fear became, you know, environmental uh, issues. So the record has that on it. And the reason that we led with that is because once I'd done that with Greta, my initial idea was to have it to be the first track on the album, so when everyone got the album, they had this statement at the beginning. Mm. But as soon as I recorded it, I was like, that is not a statement for six months' time, that's a statement for now. Yeah. We have to put it out. Um, so we did. So it's not really a record about the environment. Oh, it's not? Well, I mean, People is a bit, the mm. song, you know, and, and th th there is moments on there that are about that, but it's another record about me. I mean, to be honest with you, like, we kind of had moments, even though we, most people in our situation probably make like their most flash record. And we just keep laughing to ourselves being like, can we really make a record like this right now? Like there's a lot of attention on us. And this is a very like inward record. I don't know. <laughs> Were you in the studio when Grisha recorded her vocals? Yeah, I went to Stockholm to do it. Ah. She must be approached by so many people. Was she a fan of you guys? From the conversation I had with her, she's not particularly interested in culture. Mm. She had, she's serious, man. Mm. When you meet her, it's like powerful. She's not messing around. It's not like she's not nice. She is nice. She's really nice, but like, <laughs> like she's not interested in anything else apart from saving the planet. So when you meet somebody like that, they're kind of like a superhero or yeah. almost like a supervillain. Depends who you think, do you know yeah. what I mean? With their, their intensity. She is amazing and she's profound. The thing is like in pop culture, she hasn't been that approached by many people. Mm. So, but still, I think that it was the perfect, perfect combination of 
people to do it. Will she continue her relationship at all with the 1975, or was that sort of a one-off? I mean, she's not going to be, like, doing any guitar solos. <laughs> she might... No. <laughs> I'm sure we'll see her again on our travels, you know. That wraps up my interview with Matt Healy, the frontman of 1975. We recorded that back in 2019, a while ago now, but so interesting to hear his thoughts. Thank you so much for listening. I'm live on RNZ National each Saturday afternoon, but if you're a music fan, make sure you follow this podcast and share it with all your music-loving friends too. 